And now, Fastened Like Nails with Dr. Mark Hamby. Welcome to Fasten Like Nails. I'm Mark Hamby, and in the studio with me again, Miss Molly Mayo. Uh, thanks for having me. Um, yeah, thanks for being here, Molly. And we have special visitors with us today. We have Caleb and Melissa from Papua New Guinea. Yeah. Yes, thank you for having us. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, so you guys are going to speak into that. You're going to share that microphone there, and uh, Molly and I are going to lead you. So, you know, for our listening <laughs> audience, um, we don't know what this podcast broadcast is going to sound like today, but we're going to ask some questions. We just came out of class. Uh, Caleb and Melissa, and we were teaching Psalm 19, which is one of my favorite psalms. Oh, I, I think love Psalm 19. What's that? I said I love that one. Yeah. So, C.S. When... Lewis said it was the greatest chapter in all of the Bible. Really? Yeah. And uh, we learned that God speaks in a very unusual way in Psalm 19. Um, you know, in his creation, his voice goes out into all the world. Mm. You know, the heavens declare the glory of God. The firmament um, shows his hand at work. And um, if you look at it closely, those first four verses, first four or five verses, um, speak um, in a, such a way that it uses voice, um, words, um, knowledge. Is that like line and sound? Well, that word line is the word for voice goes out. So that, well, a line that goes out infinitely mm-hmm. is the same wi- same idea of your voice traveling forth. It's the mm-hmm. same Hebrew word, like the Hebrew word in horn. Uh, horns and light are, are similar where um, there's a projection on a horn that goes to a point. It's projecting outward. The same idea with light projecting out. Mm-hmm. Uh, Michelangelo, he knew Hebrew really well or fairly well, but he got confused with that word. So when he sculpted Moses... Um, in marble with the Ten Commandments, and the people were afraid of him. You know, in the in, in Hebrew, it says that there was a light shining around Moses' head, but the word could also be translated horns. And so Michelangelo, when he sculpted <laughs> that, if you go to the Uffizi, go to the, the museum over in Italy, you'll see that that um, shows a picture of him having horns coming out of his forehead. Wow. <laughs> yeah. What's... Yeah. So the same idea is the line goes out into all the earth. This projection of voice. Yeah. Mm. What's unusual is that that word is synonymous in Psalm 19, nine times. And that's usually a red flag in the Bible. God speaks in three, sevens, tens, and twelves, never in nines, never in eights, never (laughs) in, um, well, he does in eights, but never in like elevens and nines. And so that's usually a red flag. So while we're teaching that this morning, you know, we looked at it closely and not only does God, God's voice go out into the whole world nine times, but it says this in the very ending, it says, in the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart will be acceptable in your sight, my Lord, my strength, and my Redeemer. And so God says, you are the 10th word. Mm. You are the voice, my voice into the world as missionaries. So that leads me to you guys being in Papua New Guinea as okay. God's 10th word. You know, he, he gives you the responsibility and us the responsibility to share his word. We're the completion of God's word. We're the completion of his creation mm. and the completion of his, God speaking his word through us. So tell us, Caleb and Melissa, what brought you to Papua New Guinea? Well, what brought us to New Guinea was uh, a history that goes back a few decades. My parents are also missionaries there, mm. and my mom grew up as a missionary there. So, uh, so yeah, that's my grandparents. Mm. They went there back in the 60s. Mm. And so providentially, with my family being there, uh, the Lord brought Melissa and I as well. And so... You know, on a human level, that's how we ended up in the country of mm-hmm. uh, New Guinea. What's it like there? That's so cool. It's like Hawaii, but not civilized. <laughs> oh, wow. Really? Yeah, it's the same kind of terrain, and that's so what tropical. It looks very tropical, very, um, you know, rain, rainy season, non-rainy season, and mm-hmm. that's pretty much all we have. What's your house like? We have, a, think of a, a large shed on stilts, mm-hmm. uh, about seven feet off the ground. Uh, made of plywood on the sides, a metal roof that collects the rain. Uh, it's about 40 feet long, 20 feet wide. Wow. Yep. That's very primitive. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Is, that, is that because you can't get materials or you're living? Oh, that was part of it. Uh, the materials are, are difficult to get. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, it's the village we live in is very remote, very isolated. So we had to have material shipped up the river, flown in as well. Yeah. Uh, so that is one of the main mm-hmm. reasons. Okay, and you got two children. you got Elijah and you have Bella, mm-hmm. okay? And they're about, what, 12, 13, 14? 12 and 10. 12 and 10. Yeah. That's not an easy place to raise children, right? No. Um, Elijah and Bella, they've been there since they're two and three. Mm-hmm. So a lot of their life is 
Papua New Guinea, mm. and he would call it home. Mm. And he, being the first few months on our furlough back this time, 2021 into 22, he he would tell us every day, I want to go home. Oh, so, like, wow. he, I never thought my kids would be like that. I That's thought they would awesome. be for sure American and they want to yeah. be American. But their life is here, mm. is, is in New Guinea, not here. Yeah. And so it's been a it's been a different way for them, you know. Do you feel the same way? Uh, yes and no. I, I have strong Italian American roots and so uh-huh. I you know I miss my family uh-huh. um, but I do miss the simplicity of New Guinea it's much more simpler life not the running the rat, rat race mm-hmm. of America okay so there's gonna we're gonna be talking with our students you know when we're done here and some of them you know are looking forward to the American dream they get married they have a family they <laughs> raise their children in mm-hmm. you know the Western culture but you gave that up mm-hmm. why I mean, did you both think that through? Like, you, did you know what you were getting into when you married him? <laughs> yeah. So I met Caleb when I was 16. Whoa. And um, I was taking college classes as, like, a uh, homeschooler. Mm-hmm. And he had just come off the mission field and chose to take the county classes because he was like, I don't know where else to go. Mm. And I met him through the, the Christian group there. Mm-hmm. Um, and he told me pretty much right off the bat, like maybe two months in, you know, I'm going to be a missionary to Papua New Guinea. So, mm. <laughs> so you're in, or, you're in or you're out, right? I know. Right. <laughs> Very straightforward. If, if, have you guys ever heard of the um, Burma Rangers? I heard I, I heard the name. I don't know anything oh, about it. The Eubanks. You've got to see. What is it called? The Eubanks. The, Uba- the Eubanks from okay. they're part of the Burma Ranger. Okay. I, I've heard the name, and, but I don't know anything they're, about it. They're missionaries. They have three children. Mm-hmm. Okay. And their, their children get shot at by. Oh, my. You know, Islamic extremists. Yeah, wow. um, it's pretty amazing. He he hides behind tanks to rescue women that are being used as, wow. um, you know, um, just decoys. Yeah, yeah wow. Well. They had just put out a film. There was a, a guy on their team who felt called to video a lot of the stuff that was going on there. So he was following them around, uh, kind of capturing a bunch of the things that they were going through. And then they released it. I think it was 2019 or 2020 or something. But we played it for the 2020 Guild. Yeah, and that's, powerful. Um, that was, yeah, it was very powerful. And then we were able to, like, call them and, and talk to them for a little bit about kind of what you were talking about mm-hmm. there. It was, it yeah, was they, crazy. So I asked, I asked, you know, here's Karen, you know, she's a mom, three children. They're getting, their kids are getting shot at. They're in the middle of oh. artillery shelling. Okay. So I asked Karen, I said, you know, Karen, you know, how do you make decisions like that? You're putting your children at risk when you go to these places, mm-hmm. you know, to help rescue people. Um, they believe in rescuing people, you know, rescuing them from, from, from the line of fire as well as then feeding them and then giving them the gospel. And, um, and I said, how do, you, how do you discern God's will when you make decisions like that? And she goes, well, first and foremost, foremost, we never say if. We just say to God, whatever you want us to do, we'll do. Mm-hmm. Because if we always live in the what, what if this yeah, happens and what if that happens, no. well, then we're paralyzed and we're never mm-hmm. going to do anything for That's the right. Lord. Mm-hmm. That's right. You know? so, so, Caleb, I asked you earlier what your favorite Bible verse was, and you pointed me to Romans chapter 15. And it was the verse that says... You know, that the gospel, um, you're going to go and preach the gospel to where it's never been shared before. Yeah. Um, that's a pretty powerful verse. Molly, can you read that? It's uh, Romans 15, 21. 20 and 21. 20 and 21. 20 can you read that? 20 and 21. Uh, it says, And so I have made it my aim to preach the gospel, not where Christ was named, lest I should build on another man's foundation. But as it, as it is written, to whom he was not announced, they shall see. And those who have not heard shall understand. Okay, so Caleb, unpack that. What's uh, what's the reason that you're in Papua New Guinea, and how does that how does that how would you share that with young people today that are trying to figure out what God's will is for their lives? T- tell us about that verse. Why that's important to you? Well, if we were to ask who is the most well-known missionary in the New Testament, I'm sure a lot of us would answer and would agree it's Paul. Mm-hmm. And so Paul writing this passage and. Romans, towards the end of his letter to the uh, to the uh, Christians there in Rome, he ends by saying what his purpose is as a missionary, right? Mm-hmm. As as an evangelist going out into the world. Paul, what's your purpose? What's your aim? Mm-hmm. What's your ambition? That's exactly what he says in verse twenty. My aim, my goal as a missionary, as an evangelist going out into the world, is to preach the gospel where Christ hasn't mm-hmm. yet been preached. Mm-hmm. And that's I tell churches all the time that's central to biblical missions. When Jesus gave his people the Great Commission. 2,000 years ago, the same call, the same command is on us today. 
It's to go into the world and proclaim the gospel. Mm -hmm. And so we should always be thinking, I challenge Christians and churches uh, with this all the time, we should always be thinking when it comes in the context of missions, where has the gospel not gone? Mm -hmm. Where has the gospel never been preached? And we need to go there to bring the gospel. That's exactly what Paul is saying here Mm -hmm. in Romans chapter 15, verse 20. But but wait, wait, how do you connect though with, these are people that don't know you guys, you're unfamiliar with the territory, you're unfamiliar with the people. Is there a different language too? Yes, mm-hmm. yeah. So yeah. you guys had to learn a different language. Yes. Yeah. Say something to me in, in Papua New Guinea. One <laughs> uh, of them named Leo. What? <laughs> <laughs> what, what is what, my name? Yes. Ah, oh, I got it. One of them named Leo. So there's there's a national language uh-huh. spoken in the country, pretty much throughout the country. Mm-hmm. Most adults know that. Built off of English. Built off of English. From World War II. Mm. Really? And, okay. uh, and then there's also a lot of local languages as yeah, well. Yeah, the travel languages. Okay, That's crazy. Melissa, I'm going to ask you a really tough question. You ready for this? Mm-hmm. Okay, you ready? Not going to be an easy one. <laughs> I mean it. It's not going to be easy. Bring it. Okay. <laughs> Let's say that your husband gets killed on the mission field. You're right. raising two children. Are you going to be bitter towards God? No, I wouldn't be bitter towards God. I don't know if I could – I always say this. I don't know if I could carry out – what he would be doing, such no, as God Elizabeth Elliot, wouldn't require that either. But right, no. I, where we live, um, we see so much death. I mean, I've never seen so much death in my life until I moved there. Wow. Um, why? Why is that? There are death adder snakes that they get bitten by. What are they called? Death adder. Death adder. Oh, adders. Yeah, and they Whoa. they get bitten by them out in the jungle, not necessarily in the, the village. I've not met one that got bitten village. Um, they bite you, you're dead. And you're pretty much dead. Pretty much. Um, I've learned how to help them, but it's the time. How much time does it take for them to get to me? So a lot of people ask me, well, why would you bring your children into that situation? Mm-hmm. Same, going back mm-hmm. to dangers like yeah. the other missionary mm-hmm. you're talking about. And, um, oh, yeah, fear fear can like literally paralyze you. That's mm-hmm. one of my life verses. Which okay, well, let's look at that. I asked you the same question. What is your favorite Bible verse? And you quoted 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 8. Eight. Well, verse, verse seven, seven says, yeah. "For God has not given us the spirit; has not given us the spirit. God has, God gave us a spirit, not of fear, That's but right. of power and love, and self control, or a sound mind. Mm-hmm. Therefore, I'm not ashamed of the testimony or the gospel of Christ." Mm-hmm. That's right. Uh, okay, I don't, I don't. Okay, so I was just thinking here. You, when you mentioned it was like Hawaii, only more primitive. I was thinking like I'm going to go to Papua New Guinea. Yeah, it's like beautiful. Then you right? mentioned the adder snakes. And I'm thinking I'm not going to Papua New Guinea. Well, yeah, in our region, it's where we are. Caleb's parents and grandparents were missionaries in two different areas as well, and none of them had to deal with this kind of snake issue. Hmm. Our where we live is where these death adders are, hmm. and so um, a lot of people have died from the death adder. Wow. Uh, malnutrition for children, dysentery. I mean, I watched a woman die giving birth to a child. I mean, this is very real wow. things that mm-hmm. are happening. Like Rachel dying giving birth in exactly. Genesis. Wow. Um, okay. So that's hard. Okay, so you're there because why? Why are you Why are you there? Your husband's gone. Let's say what 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 what's caused you to say I'm going. Uh, well, f- first Caleb's saying we're going to go as a family, right? But. In the beginning, I used to say to him, I could never call this place home. Sort of bitter, but not like I, I wasn't really into it. And then I kept asking the Lord to help me because I'm a social person to to love the people. You have to help me love these people. Wow. Mm-hmm. And then the Lord gave me the heart for the people. Wow. And as you get to know them, awesome. they are people. Wow. Mm-hmm. Right? What, so, make, what makes them the same and what makes them different? If they are different. That's a good question. Well, what makes them the same is all of us throughout the entire world, we're all human Sinners. beings created in the, in the, image, in the of image of God. Of God. Wow. Right. There's only one race. You know, we live in a day and age where everyone wants to divide yes. people right, up into right. different races and things. The reality is we're one race. Mm-hmm. We're fallen humanity. The gospel, as you've asked, you know, why is it worth it? Because the gospel is a good message that will make a new race, mm-hmm. a new humanity. It says, it says mm-hmm. that in the book of Ephesians. And that's what the work of missions is all about. Christ wow. sending forth his word. That's yeah. what you talked about earlier in, in Psalm 19. Sending forth his word to save his people to make a new, new humanity. A new creation. For a new creation. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. Right. Old that's things right. are passed away. All things are becoming new. Yeah. Wow. Mm-hmm. Beautiful. So this is the real deal, huh? You yeah. guys are the real deal. I, think, I Christ, hope so. You know, Christ, Christ is the real deal. Mm-hmm. Amen. You know, there's only one reality in the universe, and that's Christ and his word the gospel and salvation from sin. Mm-hmm. And that's what that's why we're here on planet Earth. Okay, so I don't sense, usually, you know, missionaries don't usually make it. Their marriages don't make it. Mm-hmm. Um, just 
they just have a very difficult time. They're away from people. They're away from – I don't sense that with you two. Hmm. So what makes your marriage grow and be strong? Christ. (laughs) Uh, No, we go through our trials. We go up and down. I mean, most people, especially in America, are not living with each other 100% of the time. Mm. The husband goes to work. Mm -hmm. The wife goes to work. Your children go Mm -hmm. to school. So on. We live 100% of the time, which – can become hard. Yeah, that's right? not easy. And stressful, and sh- there could be strife. Mm-hmm. And so a lot of it is just we we do know to take breaks. We go into the village for about a two-and-a-half to three-month period at a time. Then we'll leave to go get supplies because everything we have to bring into the village anyway. So we run out of food, mm-hmm. so we have to go back. If we were in the village 100% of the time, I feel that we would definitely burn out. Mm-hmm. But because we get a break... We can go back to um, a mission compound where we can go and buy all our supplies. I have other like-minded American friends. Mm-hmm. We get to spend a little bit of time with them for about four weeks, and then we go back in. Mm-hmm. That's a break. Mm-hmm. So you go there for a couple months. You're, you're yeah. away from – wow. That's no internet. Something. That's Nothing. really something. Okay, so mm-hmm. there's marriage and there's parenting. Um, how, how are your children getting their education? We homeschool them. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's really the only option. Uh, we were both homeschooled, Melissa and I, and mm-hmm. so for us, it's it's natural, it's mm-hmm. easy. Uh, so we homeschool our kids, and that's the plan for the foreseeable mm-hmm. future as mm-hmm. well, even through high school. Yeah. Um, I personally, you know, obviously we're biased, but I think homeschooling is is the best education. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah it is. You know, public yeah. school nowadays is a disaster. I've told people, you couldn't pay me to send my kids to public school. No. Um, mm-hmm. So we enjoy homeschooling. Um, and if if I could go back to the question you asked earlier about um, about our marriage. And one of the one of the keys is confessing sin yeah. oh, amen. and, and <laughs> asking for forgiveness. Wait, 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 Molly, have we heard that before? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's huge. It's yeah, it's, it's central. Sin. It is yeah. central, isn't it? Oh, and and everyone, as you're listening to this, that's what it takes. Love covers mm-hmm. a multitude of sins. Mm-hmm. When in doubt. Just try love, not thinking of yourself better than somebody else, and mm-hmm. stop pointing the finger and say, "Okay, Lord, what what's in?" Because usually I'm thinking like it's Debbie's got to change, you know. <laughs> you know and, and whenever God, you know, God says, "Well, it's something in you. You're just not getting getting mm-hmm. it," you know. And whenever I take that first step yeah, to initiate good. reconciliation, yeah, it, it melts the hearts and hardness. Yeah. yeah. So that that is key in marriage. Yeah. You know, it's, mm-hmm. marriage is two sinners living together. Yeah. <laughs> and we sin against each other. Often, yeah. mm-hmm. uh, which is life in a cursed world, and we should sin less. That's what Christ calls us yeah. to. Amen. We should seek to be like Christ and everything. Uh, but when we do sin, which we do, then we need to confess sin and ask for forgiveness. And that will be the greatest influence on your children's lives. Mm-hmm. Watching mom and dad daily confessing their sins and reconciling, finding redemption, that's going to be the greatest influence in their lives as we're looking out yeah. through the through the recording studio glass scene and <laughs> them walking right, around. Right. Yeah, <laughs> I, I think you're right. You got some special kids there. Okay, so I'm going to just kind of bring this to a close here then. Um, this is this is really cool. We're looking forward to you guys sharing with our students here. Um, what has what have been some of the greatest trials that you've faced while you've been there? Do you want to go first? Or? Uh, you start if you have something. So, um, the big again, I like I was talking about death, that was something. The biggest trial I had I'm going to go back, is 2015 where I was debilitated with anxiety mm. and panic attacks. Mm. And I was in America. Oh, wow. Um, and I, I I was already in New Guinea for about a year, came back, and I guess everything sort of escalated in my brain, and then it became this. And I had anxiety so bad for a year and a half, and we were going back to New Guinea. You seem like the last person that would suffer with anxiety. <laughs> oh, no, you don't know me then. <laughs> well, no, I mean, you're, yeah. you're more type A, you're strong, yeah, that is true. driven. That's not normal, mm. but... I was I was ridden with it. Like, it was bad. Mm-hmm. And um, God used that as he was to sanctify me. Mm. And obviously, he's continuing to yeah, until I yeah. die, right? Mm-hmm. But I couldn't see it then. I just saw it as this awful thing. Like, mm-hmm. why would you allow mm-hmm. this to come mm-hmm. to me? Mm-hmm. And we were going back to New Guinea, and I had numerous people say to me, "You don't, you shouldn't go back to New Guinea mm. until you can feel better." Ooh. And it was it was a challenge. It was a challenge in my head, knowing that I have I have all my faith and trust in Christ. Why am I going to listen to people? But then you're like, well, maybe I should listen to people because mm. they might be, I don't know, just more educated or more aware mm-hmm. of something. Mm-hmm. And Caleb was like, "No, we're going to go back, 
And I did biblical counseling, which is different than Christian counseling. Yep. Biblical yep. counseling. Yep. It no. works. <laughs> Very good. It's the real thing, yeah. And mm-hmm. with that and just trusting the Lord, I went back in 2016, and within two weeks it went away. Wow. And I think it was just him saying, like, are you going to trust me yep. and follow mm-hmm. me? Wow, that's powerful. Because all I didn't know what was to come. We weren't in our village yet, and then that's when I started to see all the things I see. Wow. Mm-hmm. And so he obviously used that to build me because I was going to see things I couldn't handle. Uh, I got the goosebumps just listening to that because that's exactly what God did with me. Mm-hmm. Same thing. Mine was a lot longer period of time, but he was. it was like, they're going to trust me. I went through a debilitating um, illness, and I'll never forget my very first time. So here I, w- I was a speaker, right? I'm speaking around the country, and then I get this debilitating mm. illness, and I can't even put words, connect words in a sentence, mm. okay? It, it was like similar to a stroke, only it was uh, something that affected my central nervous system, some medication that I had taken, and I had a serious effect. I couldn't hold saliva in my mouth. Mm. I couldn't connect words in a sentence. Um, extremely anxious. My my uh, my arms my were twisted like this, so it affected everything. Even my body, I couldn't even drive hardly. Mm-hmm. I drove um, the first time I started driving. I was driving the truck, um, and I I had horses. I was driving the the truck with a horse trailer, and I just was taking them down toward the vet, and uh, and I ended up going the wrong direction. I drove for two hours until I realized I was going the wrong direction. I was going south rather than north. Wow. That's how upside down my world was wow. yeah so things are just crazy and god is he's he's disciplining me he's mm. he's um correcting yeah. some errors in my thinking during that time he's helping me to realize it's not by strength not by might but by my spirit says the lord right, right. and i'm i'm learning it slowly and then uh i finally am getting a little bit better and debbie goes why don't you just write everything out so, you know you can't connect your thoughts yet, but just start mm. writing everything out. So I, mm. I'm i speaking in New Jersey yeah. at the Enoch conference. Yeah, I went there years ago. Oh, I hope this wasn't the conference no, you were I, don't <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember Lamplighter, but we were there when I was young. <laughs> uh-huh. Okay, so I'm at the, in my yeah. first time in two years speaking, okay? Mm. And there's like 75 women in this room that I'm going to speak to, and I'm reading it, and within 10 minutes, every woman walks out except for the lady sitting in the front because it's so boring. And she looks at me and she goes, I'm so sorry. She goes, this is just really boring. And there I am sitting in an empty room as a speaker. And I stood there and I just wept. Hmm. I'm like, I'm done. I'm done. And my little girl, Jennifer's 10 years old, and she's working at the booth. Yeah, yeah, sure. You know, and we hardly sold anything. And... (laughs) Aww. We, uh, I'm laughing, but that's sad. Yeah, yeah. We, we pack up our books, and uh, Jennifer's like, "Daddy, why, why, why are you crying?" Hmm. You know, and I didn't tell her, you know. And we drove home, and I just cried silently all wow. the way home. And the next <laughs> week, I'm going to speak in Pennsylvania. So I only, I'm only speaking twice during this whole time at the Chap Conference at the uh, Harrisburg uh, Farm Show Complex. This huge place. There's going to be about six thousand people, and I'm going to speak once. And uh, I'm going to speak on the same subject that I'm supposed to was supposed to speak on at New Jersey. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I struck out in New Jersey. So I'm like, there's <laughs> no way. So I go to I go to Jonathan. I go and Jonathan's. He's now like 12 years old. Yeah, 12 years old. I said, John, no, 14. So Jonathan, I need you to play the violin at the end of me speaking, so I can tell the people that you're going to play your violin. He's a really good violinist. And uh, he goes, no. I said. And now, listen, if this was two years earlier, I would have said, you're playing your violin. You're just playing it. Don't even think about saying no. You you would never even dream of saying no to me. But God's been doing this work in my heart of not controlling my kids. So I wanted, I, I'm speaking. I, I have to have this perfect family, right? Yeah. And God is like dissembling us. We're like, mm. we're a mess. You know, marriage is hanging by a thread. Mm. Jonathan hates me. Yeah. You know, and so I'm like... Please play your violin. <laughs> Please. Help me. <laughs> I beg you. And he goes, no. I'm like, okay, if you change your mind, then just come up and play. Aww. And it was the first time he'd ever received grace. Like, it's all right. If you can't do it, no problem. I don't, yeah. give, I don't give grace. I don't even know how to give grace. And I understand. Wow. So, uh, so I get up there and I said to the people, I said, I don't know what I'm going to speak on. And they're like, huh? I said, well, I know what I'm supposed to speak on, and I spoke on it last week in New Jersey, and everyone walked out because <laughs> it was so boring. I said, so I studied three or four more things to speak on, 
but I don't know which one I'm going to speak on. So I'm going to pray. I'm going to ask God for his spirit to lead me so that when I cl- open my eyes, I'm going to be able to uh, to tell you exactly what God wants me to tell you. And I looked out at the people, and I'm going like, I, and I'm ch- turning my notes like, nope, nope, nope. And I closed my notes. And I looked out at the people, and I said, I think God wants me to tell you about my broken family and how he's trying to put us back together. And the people were like, whoa you know and mm. and i started telling him about jonathan and my relationship with him and what god's been doing in my life and how he's been chasing me and how he's trying to put me and i had sheep at that time and my sheep wouldn't follow me either um they see my sheep would run from me every time they saw me true yeah and they see my daughter they follow her anywhere and and, and people were laughing at me as the shepherd because my sheep my my son hates me and my sheep hate me you know and uh wow. yeah it's crazy and then this this is what happened um, we have this one black lamb that's born and it's not breathing and I've got a I did the unthinkable I sucked the stuff out of its nose there was I didn't have any other way to do it and just sucked it out and Jennifer's like whoa you know like I can't believe it and I saved the lamb's life mm-hmm. and Jennifer comes running screaming daddy saved the lamb a, six months earlier I caused 21 lambs to die because I didn't get them in the barn and we had a freezing night that night and the lambs were born in that freezing condition mm-hmm. and all of them died and Jennifer blamed me at, at that moment when she saw all those lambs die. I was trying to get them buried before she came out. She sees it and she's like, you're not a good shepherd. Mm-hmm. And then six months later, we have more sheep and I saved the lamb's life and she goes, daddy saved the lamb. Mm-hmm. And all of a sudden, that sh- not only did it shift in my daughter's heart, but that day I walked out of the barn and guess what happened? All 70 of my sheep and their lambs followed me for the very first time. Hmm. Instinctively, me saving that lamb's life, those sheep were watching and they knew it. And I became their shepherd that day. Hmm. It was like, if you're willing to lay down your life and get dirty, they're willing to follow. And I'm like, whoa, this is, this is the key to parenting. Hmm. This is the key to marriage. And yeah. I'm like, whoa, this is huge. And Jennifer's watching, Debbie's watching, and my sheep are following. I stop, the sheep stop. I go, the sheep go. Hmm. And like... I could have taken them to New York City and they would have followed me, you know, and, and I'm like, wow. And so here I am in Pennsylvania and I got to give this same talk and I know I can't do it. And I'm sharing the story about the sheep and Jonathan and me and Jennifer and, the, and all of a sudden, the Holy Spirit, you could just see it. It's like the Holy Spirit just started reaching into people's hearts and, and just squeezing their hearts. And next thing you know, everyone's weeping. Yeah. And, and I'm like... Mm. I close in Jesus' name, amen, and I walk out, and about five minutes later, the director of the conference comes running to our booth where I was, and she grabs me by the wrist, and she doesn't even say a word to me. She just goes, come with me, and she drags me out. I'm like, what did I do? She drags me up on stage in front of all those people I just spoke to, and she goes, tell them to leave. They're still sitting there, and there's another another session that's got to come in. She goes, tell them to leave. I'm like, I mean, folks, my session's done. We We got to leave now, and this old man walks up, a grandfather who walks up, he's got his hanky, he's crying. He goes, tell the people to come forward. We need to pray for everyone. And all of a sudden, everyone comes forward. Everyone. There's like 200 some people. They all come forward. We pray. We get on our knees. We cry out to God. The, the session's half over for the other speaker. You know, the, the lady, the host, she was there. She's going like, whoa. She goes, I'm not stopping this. You know, and 25 years later, this guy's probably 100 years old now. This he sees me at a conference. This guy's ancient of days. He goes, you do not know who I am. And I looked at him and I said, you're him, aren't you? He goes, I am. Wow. And I'm like, I thought, as, as years go by, I keep thinking this maybe never really happened because I'm a storyteller and I can exaggerate stories. Right, right. And I'm thinking like, did this really happen like that? Was it as powerful as that? He goes, it really happened. See? Yeah. yeah. And, uh, we never know the purpose and the reason why God has us go through the things we yeah, go through. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And I'm really thankful for you guys that you guys, we're going to be praying for you. We want to support you. Um, will I go there? i got to study snakes. <laughs> but there is no fear, though, right? When God calls us to no, do something. No, he, he doesn't let you have the fear. I mean, I've never relied on Christ like I do when I'm in the middle of the village. Whoa. Mm. Right? Yeah, there is fear, though. You know, you think of even Jesus' own life and ministry. There's fear, but boldness is, uh, I've heard of somewhere, the the strength God gives you to persevere and to yeah. continue in the face of uh, mm, in the face of fear. Mm. And so are there— That's what courage is. Yeah. 
And so it's not that fear goes away. There's times you're fearful. Right. 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 But the Lord gives you grace mm-hmm. to endure and persevere. But we He's, feel him walking with us. Mm, I mean, there's. That's awesome. There's been times Caleb's prayed and I'll, I'll be doubting. I'm doubting Thomas. I'm not proud of that. But mm-hmm. he'll be like, it's the plane because we pray for the planes to come in because it's the weather. They come mm. by weather and instruments. Mm. They don't come by like there's no landing gear and everything regarding like airstrips <laughs> and it's all rough. Whoa. So he'll be like, the plane's going to come in. I'm like, no, it's not. It can't. Uh-huh. And Caleb's like, no, I, I prayed. I know the Lord's going to give it. Wow. And I'm like, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. I'm such the ba- I'm the bad guy, but he always no. he really has amazing trust with the Lord. No, that's why you w- both work so well together, though. Mm-hmm. You know that helps you to be strong. You know you have to be stronger for her. Yeah. It works both ways. That's true. Yeah. yeah. Wow, Caleb, Melissa, thank you guys. Um, you guys have blessed us. Um, we're going to pray for you. We're going to pray for you on air, and then um, we're going to continue to support you, mm-hmm. um, sending you new dramas when they come in. Molly, one of their favorites, guess what it is, Molly? Which one? You guess. It's, <laughs> short, it's one of our shortest ones. Uh, Tell them. Tell her. Well, one of my favorites is Dash to Pieces. Really? Yeah. And Dash to Pieces? I, 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 Molly, oh, Molly wrote that. God. Oh, really? That's crazy. Yeah. 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 True. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, they <laughs> like that one. I like Roman history. And, oh wow! Uh, so yeah, that part about uh, Paul at the end. Yeah, that was that amazing. was Mark. Yeah, oh, really? yeah, that was pretty cool. I'm like, what? That was so uh-huh. awesome. <laughs> so we enjoy that. We enjoy oh, that's your stories. So cool. Yeah. yeah. Well, guys, thank you so much. This is a a new beginning, new relationship that, uh, you know, when people walk in here for tours here at Lamplighter, I'm always like, okay, God, what are you doing? Is this a tour that's going to come and go or is this a tour that's going to be for a reason? (laughs) Molly was, uh, she was with family up in Rochester and I'm like, "Uh, I need Molly back here. Molly, (laughs) come (laughs) on back. I'm glad I came back. Yeah, well, thank you. Yeah. Okay, That's let's pray. Uh, Lord Jesus, thank you so much for new opportunities such as this, um, for Caleb and Melissa, for Elijah and Bella. Pray for your hand of protection, and we pray that they would be able to go back uh, to Papua New Guinea and share Christ in his gospel mm-hmm. like never before, Lord, that there could be a revival that takes place out of that country, Lord, especially with everything that's been going on with COVID and, mm-hmm. and the fear um, Lord, um, bless them in ways they cannot imagine. Lord, if we can support them, even bring teams out there, you tell us what to do, Lord, and we'll do it. Mm-hmm. Regardless of any obstacles, Lord, we'll trust you. And we look forward to what you're going to do when we see, Lord, and, when, and we're going to see you soon, we believe. Mm-hmm. So help us to be vigilant, mm-hmm. persevering, mm-hmm. Uh, diligent, Lord. Help us to be studiers of your word, confessors of our sin. Mm-hmm. Um, help us to experience the great redemption in our marriages and our families so that others will see the power of Christ in us. And I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 And thank you for listening to another Fasten Like Nails. Molly, we'll look forward to doing this again shortly. Yes. God bless. You've been listening to Fasten Like Nails, a presentation of Lamplighter Ministries. Our mission is to make ready a people prepared for the Lord by building Christ-like character one story at a time. To learn more about our family collection of rare books, dramatic audios, or guild programs, visit lamplighter.net. To hear more podcasts, search for Fastened Like Nails wherever you listen to podcasts. If you have a question you would like to submit for the Lamplighter team, visit fastenedlikenails.net and fill out the form. That's fastenedlikenails.net. from the creative minds and talents behind Lamplighter Theater. I've never seen anything like it. This summer, Lamplighter presents The Lamplighter Guild. A week of mentoring and apprenticeship in the dramatic arts. Learn script writing, music composition, sound design, directing, and voice acting from world-class professionals. Registration for the Lamplighter Guild is limited, so sign up today at lamplighter.net, lamplighter.net.